three can keep a secret if two of them are dead. Have You Seen Me seamlessly picks up where Gossip Girl leaves off, but with more sex, more lies, and more dead bodies a la How to Get Away with Murder and You. When a coveted member of a group of entitled yet ambitious 20-somethings goes missing, their deadly secret is threatened to be exposed. But the real question is, who will be next? Read Have You Seen Me by creator Candy Washington on Amazon Kindle Vela or listen and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. Welcome to Sugar Pills, a practical guide to self-care, where your host, writer, actor, and producer Candy Washington helps you live a more joyful life with a cheeky dash of pop culture news. Be sure to subscribe, leave a five-star review, and join the conversation on Instagram at Candy Washington. Let's go. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Sugar Pills, a practical guide to self-care. As always, I'm Candy Washington, and I am honored to help you lead a more joyful life. So before we dive into today's episode, which I am sure will be a very enlightening conversation with Petia Kolobova, don't forget to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. Or if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe as well and share with a friend because your journey to self-love and self-worth is always better with a little bit of support and if you need some extra support don't forget to grab our create your dream life course which is linked below and you can also join our lux life vip group on facebook which is also linked below so with that welcome to the show petia how are you i am so excited to be here candy thank you so much it's going to get better and better i can tell <laughs> yeah it's gonna be great and so for everyone who's listening or watching if you're not familiar with her she is a woman's transformation coach the founder and ceo of unapologetically abundant which is what we are all about so she is in the right place we are in the right place and she is an expert in the area of meditation teaching fitness and confidence coaching so welcome how are you i am doing amazing thank you so much such i yeah. love your energy such a beautiful <laughs> introduction you know i've been stalking you like earlier today on instagram <laughs> i'm like i just love her energy it's so beautiful Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So do you want to tell everyone how you got your start and just a little bit about you and then we can just flow into the show? Absolutely. I love that question, you know, because sometimes when we connect with people, whether it's through podcasts, social media, however we find, you know, the people that we are inspired by, it's so easy to just look at them and say, oh, good for you. You're living in tropical location. Good for you. You have a love of your life, successful business, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But usually people don't see the journey and how we got where we are, because I think that that's what makes us relatable. And that's why, we are where we are to give hope to other people and to inspire other people. So yes, I do have all those beautiful things, beautiful husband living right now. We are in Tulum, Mexico. So it's oh. pretty sunny, pretty hot. <laughs> Not sure what part of world you are right here right now, but yeah. uh, it's hot. It's beautiful. I yeah. prefer the hot over cold, really. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I live in California, so not, not too far from Tulum, but I mean, I, I would prefer to be there than here. I right hear you. my husband is from like raised them born in California, you know, in yeah. Chino. So we are like visiting often. Mm -hmm. It I think it's like too hot for him here, but you know, what wouldn't you do for love? So exactly. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Mentioning all of that, plus successful business and everything, having, you know, podcasts and just hosting retreats. You know, I've been hosting retreats since 2019, and all of that is beautiful. And I always remember, you know, the humble beginnings, like to coming from a very small town from Czech Republic. Hence, that's where my accent and weird name it's from that nobody can pronounce anyway. Beautiful name. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank name. you. It's just unpronounceable. So, you know, it's, it's always a great start of conversation. Like, how do I pronounce your name? I get it like 10 times a day. So... <laughs> And I get married and change my last name, but it's not le like legally shifted because it's just so much work with it, you know? So, so much work. Yeah. Yeah. But so what brought you to, to becoming the, C the CEO of um, Unapologetically Abundant? Like what was your journey to, to that? 
Mm -hmm. The journey was living in the small town and thinking that that's all it is, you know, because that's what I saw in my parents, my grandparents, people comparing one to another and just living in such a scarcity mindset, thinking that you are not enough, there is not enough time, there is not enough money and always just competing with the people around you. Then when I was, you know, in my 20, um, when I turned 20, I just knew that something has to change. And I left for London. So I moved to London. Then I moved to Spain. Then I moved to United States, you know. And uh, I just felt like I kept running and looking for something better. Like I lived in, I call it Wenland. When yeah. I will be happy, when I have a man, when I have the money, when, you know, I have a new job, when I have the promotion. So always being in that. And I kept being miserable. Yeah. I kept being miserable because nothing on the outside could really help me to feel better, you know? So when I came into my thirties, that was like a slap in the face from the universe, you know, when the... I, I got the, I was divorcing because my husband was cheating on me. There was like more things, but you know, yeah. just the misalignment. And I realized that all the things in my life that were happening, the common denominator was me. Yeah. You know, the cheating boyfriends, cheating husbands, you know, eating disorder, attempts of suicide, toxic relationships, mm. always being people pleasing. And so I realized that if I want to change my life, I have to change and I have no idea where to start and what to do. So this is almost a decade ago. Okay. Wow. So it was not as easy as like, let me like go on Instagram and find million influencers doing this thing or, you <laughs> yeah. know, things. It, it's so much easier. Now you go on TikTok, you know, you go on Instagram and you can spend hours there, which, you know, can be good and not so good. But uh, I was searching on YouTube and Google, and I find back then Louise Hay. I don't know if you're familiar with her, but I absolutely love Louise yes. Hay and her teachings. Yes. So she was the one who really gave me a hope that there can be a better life and that it's never too late. Because she's, I, I was like... Yeah. I am too late. Like I am, you know, almost 30 and like, <laughs> yeah. Now when I look at it back almost a decade later, I'm like, yeah, right. You're late. But back then when I was like yeah. in it and I felt stuck and I'm like, well, by 30, I thought I will already have the Prince Charming and couple kids and mm -hmm. abundance and beautiful mansion, whatever. Right. Like yeah. whatever our dreams are. And I'm sitting there in my thirties with like, bottle of wine in my hand, not glass bottle. And I'm like, <laughs> what am I going to do with my life? You know? Yeah. So I started to listen to YouTube videos and I literally started to brainwash myself. That was the beginning of my journey, yeah. brainwashing myself instead of having that inner critic saying like, who do you think you are? You're worthless. Who would love you? Look at you. And things like that. I started to listen to Louis Hay and Tony Robbins and Les Brown and all these people gave me hope, you know, back then I really needed motivation. So yeah. what I discovered on my journey is that when we are feeling blocked or stuck in life is because we need some motivation. We just need to hope that something better it's possible. So I started with the motivation and it lasted me a couple of years and things started to shift. The people I was attracting, the work I was doing, I used to work in a corporate, then I got fired. I created my first business, social media marketing agency. And then I started my second business, you know, life coaching. I had a million titles. I don't know about you, Kendu, but like <laughs> yeah. putting titles on me, it's like, oh my gosh, I went through like all alphabet probably, you know? <laughs> Starting yeah. with, you know, like abundance coach into transformational coach. I don't think I had a title with Z or X or something weird like that, but anything in between, like trying to really find myself and put myself in a box, which didn't work either. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like going from that motivation, the next step for me was the inspiration like being inspired because in the past I used to be comparing myself with other women, you know, yeah. so much. And Come on, we all have those moments when we look at her hair, look at her car, yeah. look at her husband, look at her puppy or kids or whatever, right? And we feel still that comparing. But back then, 
I started to be inspired by other women. I'm like, wow, she has a podcast. That's cool. Yeah. And I'm like, maybe I could do that. Oh, wow. She's hosting live events. That would be fun. Let me try. I had no idea how to do any of these things, but I'm like, you know what? Like this lights me up. So I stopped listening to the logic and to the mind and really started to follow that inner intuition, that inner knowingness that it's always guiding you, whatever you believe, source, God, universe, it doesn't matter. There's this always deep inner knowingness inside of your body, not your head, going lower. It's your heart. It's your spleen. It's your gut, whatever. I mean, later I looked uh, into human design to which I'm teaching now, but mm -hmm. that's how I learned to really reconnect to my body, you know? So from motivation to inspiration, and then the last really, which I'm still face living in is the impact. Mm. Once you're motivated, then you're inspired by others and you see like, where is your curiosity leading you and guiding you instead of judging it, you are just open to it and go and try different things. I remember one time, uh, one of my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients asked me like, how did you know what to do? And I told her for me, what works it's by doing. Yeah. You know, so I feel like those were the first two phases and the last one, it's really the impact, like creating, being the impactful one, right? Like, and it's also like taking a radical responsibility and owning your impact, the impact you have on people around you, the people, you know, like it, it's like this inner circle and expanding, like we have a responsibility. We have people listening to us right now. We have people following us on social media. And so many of those people just trust us so much. So mm -hmm. owning your impact in all of the things that it encompasses. So I feel like those were the, the most important stages of my life, which I know it's a long answer, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a great answer. And I, I love that because once you become like responsible of your impact, then you become the motivation and the inspiration for other people. Yes. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Do you hear an echo? Is that just me? Okay. I don't. Okay, perfect, perfect. So let me make sure. So I love your story of, and I think so many people can relate to the part where it's never too late. And I'm gonna tell you, I did an exercise because it totally uh, aligns with this last night where I did should statements where it was like- Wow. Cause I was like, I was in exactly what you're talking about right now. I was like, well, by now I should, 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 should. I was like shooting mm. all over myself. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was like, you know what? You have to get out of this vibe, Candy. You need to like level up how you're feeling. You need to get in high vibe. And so what I did was I wrote down all of the shoulds that I was thinking, and then I crossed them out and I wrote, I am statements. Hmm. And so I wrote like, I am doing what I thought I like was should be doing just to like create that and get hmm. and getting into that mode. So what hmm. are some of the things that, you know, any tools or techniques that you do when you kind of fall back into the, the low vibe or the not feeling inspired or the not feeling motivated, or mm. you kind of slip back into those, you know, negative thinking patterns. What are some things that you do or can suggest mm. that we do to get ourselves back into that, you know, good feeling space that, that you mm. talk about? I love that question so much, Candy. Like what can we really do when we're like falling back? Because we all have those moments, right? So the interesting thing that I started to incorporate now, it's checking in with myself, where am I? And this applies only to uh, uh, ladies who are in like reproductive age, you know? So <laughs> I will have another tips for those who are not, but I check in with myself where I'm in my cycle, you know? Because mm. I realize that sometimes I'm so hard on myself. Like, I don't know if you're familiar with human design, but I'm a, you know, in human design, I'm a generator. So I am the life force. I should be working, right? But there are times I don't want to do nothing and I feel low energy and I feel like more critical to myself. So I'm like, I check in with myself like, oh, okay, I'm in my, you know, like uh, luteal stage, like right before my period, or I'm just like mm -hmm. finishing my period. I don't have as much energy or, you know, like I have so much energy and I didn't put it out there. So that's the first thing that I really check in with myself. Like, where am I in my cycle? That's the first thing. 
And then I check in with my like energy levels, right? Like how am I feeling? Because how we are feeling is going to affect how we are thinking and how we are thinking is going to affect the actions that we are thinking. So Mm -hmm. I check in with myself, like how am I feeling? I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling tired. I'm feeling upset. I'm feeling frustrated, right? And I don't say I am. I say I am feeling because Mm. I'm not, I am not anger. I'm not frustration. I just feel that. And that's a super important, like, you know, distinguishing too for us. It's, it's so important. What are you saying after the, I am like, what are you declaring to the universe? Mm -hmm. So I love to check in here. How am I feeling and acknowledging that? And then I like to ask myself, what do I need right now? So often we check with other people. We are so giving, we're so nurturing. We love helping others. We love impacting others. And then we forget that there is also another person, right? That we get to start with, right? So I check in with myself. What is that I need? Do I need to take a nap? Do I need to go exercise because I have too much energy and I'm frustrated because I'm not letting it out? Do I just need to turn off my brain? So let's do guided meditation. Do I need to clear up some energy? Do I need a breath work? Mm -hmm. So I check in with myself and putting myself back as a priority. Because when you're putting yourself as a priority, you're not going to be in your critical mind because you're fulfilling your needs. Because just think about it. So very often when we are feeling sad, frustrated, inner critic, it's coming out. Mm -hmm. It's because we gifted our power on the outside. We were outsourcing our happiness, worthiness. I was expecting something from my husband, from my dog, from my clients, whatever. Some needs were not met. How can I meet my own needs first, you know, and just remind myself that I am taken care of, I am protected, I am provided, and it's beautiful and amazing to ask for help, but start with yourself, you know, maybe what do you need? It's to call someone because sometimes what I also ask myself, it's who would have the answer to this? Who would know how to support me? You know, because again, you can be like, okay, I I need help. I need support because I'm really feeling overwhelmed with my business. I'm feeling overwhelmed with my relationship. Who would have the answer? Who do I know who has a successful business? Who do I know that has a great relationship? So, you know, you go from self to onto the outside and ask yourself, like, who can support me? Who can really help me? So, you don't have to be doing it all by yourself. And you're not even meant to do it all by yourself un- unless you're a manifester in human design. Then you are meant to just go and inform <laughs> people that you are doing something, you know. But I feel like that is like super important, you know. Check in with yourself, give yourself what you need, ask who has what do you need. And I absolutely love the journaling that you did, you know, about the shoots <laughs> and how I like to like. Also, like you can do the I'm statements, but how I love to also do it is uh, turn it into the could, right? Like, oh, I should have like two kids by now. I should have a mansion. I could. Mm -hmm. I really could. I could have a mansion by right now. I could have a kids. I chose not to. I could be married and live in Bahamas, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, hey, I could and I made different choices. So it brings you back into your power. You know, yeah. and another thing that I love doing like an exercise, like writing exercise is mm-hmm. when these limiting beliefs come up, you know, like I'm not good enough. I don't have enough clients. I don't have enough money. Yeah. Uh, I don't have the perfect, but whatever it is, I write them down. All of the limiting beliefs that are coming to me. And then I ask myself, is this really, really true? Is that like hundred percent factual true? It's a fact. Is it? It's not like most of the times it's not a fact, you know? So if that is not true, let's say, for example, if I say I'm not enough because I was thinking that by now I won't have a six figure coaching business. I will have seven figure coaching business, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not enough. And I get to ask myself, is that really, really truth that I'm not enough? No, it's not. 
Okay, if this is not true, what is? Because we get to remember that nothing in the universe can exist in the vacuum. So sometimes we are trying to remove these limiting beliefs and like, no, this is not true. It's like, you're thinking like, oh my gosh, I'm broke. And you're like, no, I'm not. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. And your subconscious mind, that's a BS. That's a BS. That's a BS, right? Mm -hmm. So if that's not true, what is true? Well, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm educating myself with finances. I'm learning how to be better and better with money. So what is your new truth? So identifying the limiting belief, asking yourself if that's 100% factual truth. If not, what is? You know, and just see yourself as the art in progress. Like you are, you can say like, I'm willing, I'm open, I'm becoming. So one thing that my mentor taught me is yeah. to say, I am becoming a wealthy woman. Mm -hmm. I have always been a worthy woman. I am becoming wealthy woman now. I'm becoming a woman who, and then I fill up the blank. I love this journaling, you know. I'm becoming a woman who respects herself, respects her boundaries, uh, works only with clients who she's really like light by, lit by. So, oh, these exercises are amazing. <laughs> no, no, I love that because I love that a lot of times it's hard to go from what is your limiting belief that you have to... I am X, Y, and Z, because exactly like you said, your subconscious mind says, well, that's not true. You feel like you're lying. You're faking it till you make it. And that doesn't resonate to the feeling of it. So I love that process of saying, well, I'm, I'm open to it. I am becoming it. I'm learning how to be it mm -hmm. and all of those things. So I love that because it, it, it's a way to guide your own thinking and your own subconscious mind to that place where it then becomes believable and it then becomes your assumption and then it becomes your default and that's how you feel. And then that is what you ultimately are able to attract. Mm -hmm. So I think I love that process of like taking yourself through it. And then I also really loved um, you talking about being like emotionally intelligent, like in this moment, how do I feel? Let me check in with myself, you know, and then what is it that I need? And I absolutely love the part of, um, like, what can I do for myself? But also, who has the answer to this? Like, who mm -hmm. can support me and who can mm -hmm. and who can help me? I absolutely love that. And one thing that I've started doing in the morning is the first thing I wake up, I wake up and I do and I say, thank you, God, I'm open and ready to receive your support today. Wow. Just being in the place of I am open and ready to receive your support because I used to be very much like codependent, very much a people pleaser, low self-esteem, low self-worth, so low self-value. I have to do everything by myself. It has to be perfect, blah, 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 all of that stuff. And I didn't even, a shift I had for myself was I, if I have to do everything by myself and I don't feel I'm worthy of support, that means I'm not even asking God for support because I don't even think I'm worthy of support from other people, then how in the world can I think I'm worthy of God's support? Wow. And that was a big shift where mm. it's just like, I love myself enough to know that I'm worthy and deserving of support. Mm. So I absolutely love what you said about that. Just asking yourself like, well, who, who can support me in this moment? You know, mm. who, who does have the answer? So I, I absolutely love that. And what do you think are some, some barriers to getting to the place of loving yourself and having self-worth and being open to all of the abundance mm -hmm. around us. Cause I know for me, some of my barriers were a lack of awareness. Like I didn't even mm -hmm. realize I had all this stuff going on. So what do you think are some of the barriers for people mm -hmm. to know that they need to do this work? Mm -hmm. or lack of awareness. Of yeah, lack of awareness, it's so powerful, right? Because if you're mm -hmm. not even aware that there is possibility of something better, like for me, something was nudging me, you know, like I said, like, however we want to call it, God, source, universe, like there was this like nudge of don't stay here, 
this is not it in your life. So I didn't know how this will all work out, but I knew I'm meant for more. So listening to those nudges and that intuition, it's powerful. But some of the blogs that I'm seeing or the barriers, like you mentioned, I feel like is the first, the, the very big one, it's conditioning, really. Like we get to be really aware of that. It's the conditioning. Yeah. Like I mentioned, like I'm from a small country small town you know the count the the town that we move in to when i was like five years old it had like 1200 people wow. you know can you imagine yeah. that like everybody knows everyone everybody's talking about everybody's <laughs> business it's like impossible you know to hide anywhere i used to literally be hiding into the woods i would be going to the forest so i feel like the first one like besides the awareness which is so powerful mm -hmm. It's conditioning. You have to look at your life and just look at how you're living. What is coming up in your life that doesn't feel right to you? So for example, for me, it was like cheating men. Like all of my men used to be cheating on me because the conditioning that I grew up in, my grandfather, he was a huge womanizer, always mm -hmm. like flirting with other women. I don't know what else, right? Like I was a little girl. <laughs> But they got divorced when my grandparents were over 50 years old because he moved in with his lover, you know? Yes. My stepfather was cheating on my mom when I was 18. I ran away from home and I find out about that affair and that was co-worker of my mom. So I used to think that all men cheat because that's yeah. how they were programmed. So that was my belief. So that's what I was experiencing. So this is not to blame our parents and grandparents. Listen, they didn't know any better. They didn't have the tools we have today. And just, I know crazy things are happening in the world, but we are living in easier times. We have easier access to help, resources, information that they didn't have, you know, that we do have. So it's not about pointing fingers because when we point, they will point back at us, right? <laughs> um, I learned that too. But it, it's really about just that awareness. Like, what am I living right now that used to be the stories of my surroundings and it doesn't matter if it's parents if it's school if it's friends whatever it is so the first would be really the conditioning because up until i changed my belief about all the men cheating because that's what i saw i couldn't experience anything else i started to say like god show me a better way right like mm -hmm. i am and, and it's funny because i used to say that too like i'm open and willing to receive a man who is faithful who is loyal who is for family who will treat me like the queen like the one and that's a husband that i have now he absolutely yeah. cherishes me adores me we're together four years, but every single day he treats me like the queen and he has so many beautiful details. I could not be with him if I would keep believing the old stories. Yeah. So look at your life, look what you're experiencing most likely over and over and over again, right? And ask yourself, is this my truth? Because it's not my truth that all men cheat. Why it should be true? I saw men who were like heels overhead for their wives and so faithful and such an amazing dad. Why not for me, yeah. right? If I believe that I cannot have that, now that's the next barrier. It's the worthiness. I don't feel worthy yeah. of having that. I don't feel deserving. And I saw it on so many of my clients, not feeling worthy, not feeling deserving, not not feeling special enough that's something that i'm still like working through you know like oh yeah me too after everything i have achieved i still like am like i'm not special like there's nothing special about me like there are a million other coaches there are a million other podcasters like really feeling like not special so with the worthiness we get to remember and this is something that I also learned from my mentor. It's you are not one of a million. You're one of one. Mm. You're one of one. There is no one like you. There's no one like you. There's no one with the same fingerprints. There's no one with the same history. It's just this like conditioning of separation that we are all separate from each other. We were all created to coexist and to be as one. 
And as we're growing up, we feel like we have to like, you know, like be in, in other places that we have to be other persons. So I feel like it's really the, um, the worthiness, you know, barrier. So coming back to yourself and to feel worthy. I remember, and I love sharing stories and I also love sharing stories with my clients because when we're working with our old patterns and our old beliefs, if I will tell you, Candy, of course you're worthy. Of course you're beautiful. Of <laughs> course you're brilliant. That's how I see you, right? You will be like, okay, okay. And maybe you receive it, maybe you don't. But what about next month and next year? Will you still remember the power of the words that I'm sharing with you? Most probably not. But when we hear stories, we as a human beings, we really relate to stories. We used to be sitting by the fire and sharing stories, right? Mm -hmm. So we really relate with stories. So when I tell you stories, it's not to Petya's life. It's so exciting. She has to keep talking about herself. Yeah. It's because when I say the stories, your subconscious mind, it's not blocking it. Mm -hmm. So if I tell you, Candy, you're absolutely brilliant, amazing, powerful, special. There is no one like you or like, you're so sweet, right? But are you really going to embody it? But when I share stories, it's like your subconscious mind will notice it, but it's not going to say like, hey, that's BS. That's not true. It's not going to like flash red. So the story I want to share with you, it's, um, I was in a, in a mastermind and it was like a, a mixer and we had beautiful people there like Les Brown. We had the Jay Shetty. So I got to meet yes. incredible people in person there. So as we're like mingling there and connecting, I was talking with one of um, the guests there and he used to like host retreats in India, beautiful soul, really beautiful person. And so I was talking to him and I'm saying to him, I'm like, you know, like, I feel like my biggest block is I don't feel enough. I don't feel like I'm enough. Mm -hmm. And he looks at me and he was like, can you do me a favor? I'm like, sure. Can you walk from here to the end of the room? I'm like, okay. okay. <laughs> I walked there. He was like, okay, you can come back. I came back and he was like, you see, you're enough to go from here to there. Like mm. your perception of what enough is will always be changing. And so are you. And I start crying. Yeah. Like I'm hugging a guy that I met like 10 minutes ago, you know, super nice person. But it's just like that perception of enoughness. You say you're not enough, but like, how is that even possible? Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a faith and if you believe that you're here for a reason and each and every one of us really is, we have a purpose. There is a reason. There are no accidents in the universe. Like you're not afraid to wake up in the morning that the sun will fall on our planet. You're not. You're not afraid to open up your window that you will suffocate because there is no air outside, right? right. Everything is divinely managed. And so are you. You're part of this universe. You're part of this abundance. So feeling unworthy and feeling not enough, it's just the creation of our mind. A hundred percent. Get to learn to go from our mind into our body, back to our body. Yeah, I love that. And it kind of goes full circle when you're talking about conditioning. Because I know, like, for me, like, I, you know, used to be very codependent. And it was all about the conditioning of I got my value out of what I did. So if I was the best friend, the best girlfriend, the best daughter, the best mm -hmm. student, the best whatever, whatever, all of my value and worth was tied up into what I provided or performed for other people. Mm -hmm. Instead of exactly what you're talking about, knowing that I had the intrinsic value, that mm -hmm. I am here and that is simply mm -hmm. enough. And I don't have to do, perform, or be anything in order to be worthy of X, Y, and Z. And so that's exactly like the story you told where you, you didn't have to be or do anything to go to walk from here to there. You just walked, you just were, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, you just were. And I think that's the, that the, that's it. It's like knowing that just because you are yes. is enough mm -hmm. and all of the rest of it is great and fun, but just because you are, mm -hmm. that is enough. Isn't it so freeing? It's, it's so freeing. 
I love that, you know, and sometimes we get to remember it. That's why I love, you know, like podcasts like yours and, and books and like things that we can be reminded. That's when I was starting my journey. I said I was brainwashing myself because yes. I was not in a place to distinguish what is my truth and what is the world telling me. I, I didn't know any better. So it's beautiful that now we have these tools, how we can rewrite those limiting beliefs and create something even better for us. Absolutely. And, and with the reprogramming of your mind and the brainwashing and that knowing your intrinsic value and worth, that's where I was able to do like healthy boundaries and being able to say no to people and knowing that I can say no and that is okay. And like regardless of their response doesn't take away from my value and my worth or any of those things or people choosing you and like all of that stuff we get wrapped into. It's knowing that no matter what, I'm enough and I'm okay. Yes. And anything that happens externally outside of me doesn't have the power. Just like you talked about before, I'm not giving away my power to all of these external things. I'm still worthy and I'm still enough and I'm still valuable and I'm still lovable and I'm still here. Mm. So I absolutely love that. And I love your story and just so many great gems you dropped. I have like goosebumps listening to you. <laughs> oh, <thank laughs> yeah. You. And all of that stuff and just being on your journey of um and I love that it's unapologetically abundant because I think a lot of times there's this sort of false humility out there that it's like you have to be a martyr, you have to give, you have to sacrifice, you can't want too much, you can't talk too loud, you can't, you know, aspire for things, you know, how dare you want to get paid for the value that you give, how dare you want people to pay you for coaching or pay you for this or pay you for mm -hmm. a course or whatever it is like there's a lot of shaming that goes on when you want to get, you know, a profit or a value out of the value that you give. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I even just love the, the label of it, mm -hmm. the name of it, because that is how we should be. We should want abundance in all aspects of our life without apology. You want the abundance of wealth. You want the abundance of love. You want the abundance of respect. You want the abundance of community. You want the mm -hmm. abundance of influence and health and all of that because we intrinsically deserve it simply absolutely. because we're here. So I absolutely love that. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that? About yeah, that? I. The, yeah. it's it's fascinating because I chosen, I, I have a podcast I started four yeah. years ago. It was called Be Strong Minded. Okay. You know, and then I changed it into Unapologetically Abundant, you I know, a couple of years ago because I realized when I became unapologetic, when I became true to myself, that's when the abundance come. Mm -hmm. It was not because I used to have four jobs. You know, I used to do so many things because I thought that only through the hard work, I can deserve to have money, to have love and all these things. Yeah. So when I became unapologetically me, when I'm like, you either like me or you don't, and I don't care because it's not because I don't care, but I care so deeply. So mm -hmm. I want to have energy for those people who can see me, who can be with me and leave me be myself. Like with my husband, you know, like I am just so unapologetically me and he loves me in all of my dimensions because there are days that I'm acting literally like a spoiled five-year-old. I am. <laughs> I'm crying, screaming, uh, or I'm playful. You know, it can be playful days. Yeah. And, and sometimes I'm just like badass businesswoman. And I'm like, I'm on a mission. We have a team meeting. And, you know, and there are some days that I don't want to be adulting. But mm -hmm. I can be unapologetically me. And that's how I can be with him. Because if we are wearing these masks, if we are pretending, yep. if we're trying to people please, First of all, it's super tiring. Come on. It takes so much energy than just being yourself, being with yourself and be true. And also the thing is that if you're not being true to yourself, how you are meant to be receiving things and people and opportunities that are meant for you. Mm -hmm. If you're pretending like, oh, I love this color. Well, everybody will start giving you this color. And you're like, oh, my God, why did I say that? I really don't <laughs> love that color, right? Yeah. So you got to be unapologetically you. It's like some people, they will be attracted. Some people will be repelled. We're not here to be liked by everyone. We're not here to be loved by everyone. As yeah. long as you can find 
the love within yourself and believe that there is a love bigger than you, like God or source, you're golden. Yeah. No, and it goes back to what you're talking about, about not feeling enough, because like we wear the mask, we, we people please, we pretend because we have the fear that who we are isn't enough. Mm-hmm. So we have to fake and front and pretend and wear these masks so that people won't really see who we really are because it's the fear that if they see me, they're not going to like me. They're not going to want mm-hmm. me. They're going to abandon me. Like I won't be picked or chosen. Mm-hmm. But when you pick and choose yourself, then you can be who you are authentically. And for me, like I used to, I had the complete wrong understanding of what authenticity was like complete wrong backwards idea of it. This is like, this is like years ago. I was like, I'm being my authentic self. Nothing bothers me. I'm totally cool. I'm so actualized. No. No, no, it was batshit crazy. It was wrong. It was delusional. No. (laughs) Then I realized being my authentic self actually means, no, this is how I feel. This is my opinion. I say it with respect, but I also respect myself. And I can show up with preferences. I can show up in a mood. I can show up being Mm. my, of course, I'm respectful of other people, but I'm also honoring where I'm at and who I'm at and who I am. And the people who love me for my authentic self are the people who are divinely meant to be with me. And if anybody doesn't, that's okay too. Mm -hmm. You know, so, but I had to do the work to go from that sort of like toxic positivity where I was like, no, like I'm totally fine. And I was just like, no, you're actually delusional. Like, (laughs) you know what I mean? I love how you like give yourself the self coaching, you know, now looking back. Now looking back, I'm like, oh God, girl. It's worth it, girl. How far we've come, how far come and this is this is candy something that i truly believe we also get to acknowledge you know we get to look at it because so often we're like so future oriented right like when i have that seven uh, seven figures business when i have Mm -hmm. that house on the beach when i have that husband who is massaging my feet you know i got the third one but (laughs) you know it's like the when right and you get to look back, not to compare, not to blame, not to go back in that pain, but acknowledge yourself. Mm-hmm. I There were times like, you know, like when I was 18, I attempted for suicide. My uncle did so kill himself, you know. I'm sorry. My, thank you. My grandpa tried to kill himself, you know, a few years ago because he was going through a lot of physical pain. And so... Mm-hmm going from that depression and anxiety and solitude and complete disconnection from my body, I struggled two decades with eating disorder, bulimia. And I never believed that it would be possible for me to overcome that. It was, did you see the, do you know the show Dexter? Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. I used to be obsessed with that show. So Dexter is talking about dark passenger, right? Like something Mm -hmm. gets over him and he's just not himself. That's how I felt with my depression or my eating disorder. Something came over me and I couldn't control it. And it wasn't me. And I didn't want to be like that, but I didn't know how to live differently. So now when I'm looking back at my toxic relationships, at hating Mm -hmm. my body, at being completely disconnected from you know, God and myself and the world, it's huge journey, you know? And if I die tomorrow, I'm okay. I already saved lives. I already left legacy. I already have tons of fun, you know? So I am okay. And the listeners, they get to ask themselves, are you okay? If today it's your last day, are you okay? Are you going to live the same way? Mm-hmm. One thing that I love asking my clients is, and it's like really like slap in the face usually, <laughs> if nothing ever changes in your life, are you okay with that? Mm. Yeah. I honestly am. Like everything I want, Candy, it's like it's like the, the extras, right? I want a bigger car and a new house and I want a babies and all these fun things, but that's like cherries on the top, right? Yeah. If nothing ever changes, I'm great. I have a successful business. I'm working with my soulmate clients. I'm impacting women through my work. I am hosting international retreats. I have an amazing, loving, loyal, faithful man. I have a cute dog. Like 
I'm healthy, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's so beautiful. But if you're not, you get to ask yourself, why not? What gets to change? We keep postponing it. You know, like I have a very dear friend of mine and she stays in her marriage just because of her daughter, you know? And I'm like, oh, I'm not a mom. So I don't know how it would act. Right. It's like not being in the same position. It's, it's just like difficult. Like, oh, you should do this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But the thing is that it's like, what kind of, and even if you think you're faking it well, like what kind of energetical example you're exactly. giving to your daughter, if you're not exactly. empowered, healthy, joyful, in loving, loyal relationship, what do you think she will create? She doesn't know any better, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we get to really look at that and don't wait. Don't wait when things go out of school. Don't wait when you lose the weight. Don't wait when you make yeah. more money. There are things like, what can I do right now? There is the book. Have you read the book One Thing from Jay Papasan? No, but put that it's, on the list. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. The, the one thing, it's basically just breaking down like the big visions, the big ideas into smaller steps mm -hmm. and, and just coming back into that one thing. What is the one thing that I can do that it's going to move the needle? Let's say, for example, you want to have a show like Oprah, right? Most <laughs> probably you're not going to start a TV show and have a million of viewers, right? Mm -hmm. Right away. It can happen. We never know. It's crazy social media world. Like things can happen, right? So yeah. let's not limit people. And what would be the first step? Well, the first step, you probably get to get comfortable on a video, right? So mm -hmm. it's like bringing it down. If in 10 years, I want to have a or five years, three years, I want to have a show like Oprah. What do I get to do in three years, in a year, in a six months, in a month, in a week and right now. So it's a beautiful, beautiful book that really like provoke that thought of what is the one thing that I can do right now and without the waiting part. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it never comes like it, when, whenever you put your happiness or your joy or your satisfaction or the belief in yourself in a win, mm -hmm. win never comes. Like tomorrow never comes. Because even when you do quote unquote get there, your mindset will be, well, then what's the next win? And you yeah. won't actually even be present to enjoy it. Because like, yeah. it's like you were saying uh, before, like me, like when I look back at like how far I come, another thing that I like to do is celebrate. Yes. I think we forget to celebrate ourselves to celebrate how far you come. And I consider that the abundant mindset. Like we were talking about abundance where it's instead of thinking, how far do I have to go? It's look at how far I've come mm -hmm. and to be so appreciative of that because how far you have to go seems like daunting and it's a lot. And when will I get there and all of that stuff. But if you take it the moment to just be present and just to acknowledge and appreciate and celebrate, exactly where you are exactly how you are that was another reason why i did that that should exercise that i did because i was getting in that like well when and i was like exactly like what you're saying like because it's a journey it's a lifestyle we do the work but we we all have our days and i was having a day and i was saying I should, blah, 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 blah. and i had to get still and clear and say candy pump the brakes calm yourself down you have so much to appreciate and love exactly as it is in this moment hmm. and look hmm. at how far you've come and let's celebrate and appreciate hmm. that. And another thing that I do to, you know, take care of myself and to love myself every day, I do something. I don't care if it's, I don't care if it's, I'm going to go like eat a little piece of brownie or I'm going to dance to this song or I'm going to, I don't even know, like stop and like smell these flowers. I do one at least one thing, I do more, but at least one intentional thing that is just for my pure pleasure and joy. And it's mm. just for me. It's not in service of anyone else. It's not in service of anything that I'm doing. It's not any of that. It's just one thing that is literally just because I want to do it oh. and just because it makes me feel good. Oh, like that's it is. so good. I love yeah. that. 
And I remember, you know, I used to work with like a lot of moms before, you know, and they're like, well, Petia, you don't get it. Like my kids, they don't give me like hour for like my morning routine like you have, right? I'm like, listen, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You just got to wake up in the morning and connect with your body, connect with your breath, put one hand on your belly, put one hand on your heart and just connect with your breath, connect with the present moment. That is going to activate your body, but it's also going to activate your, you know, emotional your nervous system in a good way it's not like waking up kids are screaming where is my phone whatever right so connecting with your breath connecting with your body and then what are you grateful for I know that like everybody's telling you be grateful for but are you really are you really in appreciation because what we appreciate appreciate so what are you grateful for right now in this moment yep. and then i do what is the one thing you will do for yourself today I just one it. thing so i it reminded me of that exercise you know because mm -hmm. when you wake up in the morning very often we are in our mind and we are like i have to do this and this and this and what is on my schedule where is my calendar what am i doing right it's like this doing and we forget we are human beings mm -hmm. so reconnecting and, and this exercise like this morning routine it can take you like two minutes right mm -hmm. connect with your body connect with your breath connect with the gratitude what is the one thing that you are going to do for yourself and then also i add like what is the one thing that you want to accomplish like in the mm -hmm. end of the day like what do you want because you can write 20 things on your to-do list come to the end of the day and you have 25 on then and you're like how did this <laughs> happen right <laughs> ever been there like let yes. me tackle this in and you you're starting to do things and you keep adding things like oh yep. if i do this I get oh my gosh so ask yourself like what is going to make the biggest difference like if I do only one thing today what's going to make me feel accomplished is it recording podcast is it finally cleaning your closet is it doing the laundry is it doing the you know like dry brushing your skin because you keep thinking about it and never do it so <laughs> Like it's, I have like two brushes on my, and now I put them on the shower because, you know, I go to shower every day. I used yeah. to have it like by in the bathroom, like by the mirror. No, nope, that's too far. You're going to do that. So it has to be in your face. So what do you get to do that you're going to make yourself feel accomplished? So mm -hmm. it's beautiful. I love that. I love that celebration. It's such a powerful and it's also like beautiful manifestation too. When we are in mm -hmm. celebration, our vibration, it's so much higher so and much we're higher. open for more. I love it. And I love, um, and it kind of pulls back to what you said earlier about put, like putting yourself as a priority like really making how you feel a priority. And it's like what you said with your clients, like I don't, I don't have children. So like you said, like the people who have children are like, Oh, the kids or whatever. But I think when, when you said that, what I thought was, but if your boss said, I need you to make five minutes for me today, if your if your boss said, I need you to make an hour for me today, you would find that five minutes and you would find that hour. Yeah. So you have to make yourself the boss of you and say, I'm making myself a priority. I'm going to go find that five minutes. I'm going to go make that hour because if, if the person, you know, was paying your bills or signing your checks mm -hmm. said, you know, Candy, I need 10 minutes of your time this morning, regardless of what's going on. Like I again, I don't have kids, but I'm sure moms would still make that 10 minutes for their boss. They mm -hmm. would find a way to get that 10 minutes for their boss. So it's mm -hmm. exactly like you said, make yourself that your priority. So prioritize those 10 minutes or the hour if you can, or the, or the five, it's exactly like you said, you know, make that meaningful. Put yeah. yourself first always, yourself you know. Because then you'll show up even more full for your children. Yes. You know, you'll actually show, you'll be present and you won't be as irritable and your cup will be full and you won't, it'll be easier to navigate the, the tougher things in life. Mm -hmm. when you navigate it from a place of fullness. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's easier to feed others when you're full, you know? Absolutely. Well, imagine if you're feeding others and you're starving. That's Ugh, could you imagine? <laughs> no, 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 I'm getting no. hungry now just talking about it. Me too. Well, thank yeah. you so much. This has been such an amazing hour. I really appreciate your time. And I know everyone listening and everyone watching has gotten something out of this. And how you can connect with Petia is all linked below. But do you want to two things. One, I want you to share one last 
word of wisdom, one last mm-hmm. insight, just anything that you really want to leave us with. And then the second thing is just tell us where we can find you, where we can connect with you, where we can, you know, find all of your stuff. Everything again will be linked in the show notes, but I also want you to verbally share it with us for everyone who's listening. Thank you so much, Candy. I had so much fun. It was beautiful, yeah. beautiful interview and an incredible interviewer. So um, the one last thing that I want people to remember is that they're perfectly made for their purpose. So very often we are trying to be who we are not and just like trying to fit into this world. But when you remember that you're perfectly made for your purpose, the way you look, the way you feel, the way you speak, the way you experience the world, it's perfect for who you came here to be. So that's one. And uh, another one, it's to connect with me. I love hanging out on Instagram. Like I post daily stories. That's like my favorite place to be. And I could tell by yours that you love being there too. So I connect with you there. Um, And all other things, you know, I feel like everything it's on my uh, website, petiaklubova.com and my podcast that you also mentioned, Unapologetically Abandoned. Those are like three ways how to connect with me and how to learn how you can work with me. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much. And as always, everyone who's listening and watching, please be sure to rate, like, review, and subscribe. And don't forget to share this with a friend because your journey to self-love and self-worth is always better with a little bit of support. So until next time, everyone, be well, take care of yourself and each other. Bye. Welcome to Sugar Pills, a practical guide to self-care. Where your host, writer, actor, and producer, Candy Washington, helps you live a more joyful life with a cheeky dash of pop culture news. Be sure to subscribe, leave a five-star review, and join the conversation on Instagram at Candy Washington. Let's go.